we can take a look at several of the traditional SDLC methodologies. The first one that's been around forever is a very good one to understand the process of systems development. It's based on the waterfall. The traditional waterfall depicts project management as a series of sequential events. That means that each event is done following the completion of the previous event. That also means that once we ensured that everything in one step is done, we can move on to the next step. We can see that here. The first step is to determine the requirements. What are the requirements of this system? What is the objective? What are we going to deliver in the end? It is only once we've understood the requirements, we can now work on the design. We work on a design that will actually meet those requirements. We take each requirement and map it out into the design so how each requirement will be satisfied by the final design. As an auditor then, we have to check. Have the requirements been clearly documented? We check to see whether or not the design meets those requirements. And then we move on to development. Now, in some cases, we'll develop the system ourselves, and it could just be enhancements to an existing project, could be a new project, or in other cases, we'll buy a system, buy something that's available. We often call that, of course, software or system acquisition. And the important thing then is that we develop or purchase something that does meet those design requirements. Then we test and implement the system. We test the various facets of the security and functionality of the system. We test to make sure that all of the functions work correctly. And remember, the purpose of testing is to see if the system will fail. We should test it with a mind to see, can we make it fail? And the purpose of this, of course, is because that's what we know an attacker will do. And that's what a user will often do. They'll put the wrong data in the wrong field. And we want to see if our system is resilient enough that it'll continue to work correctly, even if it's under attack. Then we work on the implementation of the system. The implementation looks at the configuration, it looks at the training of the users, the documentation, putting in place then the operational guidelines for how the system will operate. And then we move on to, of course, regular operations, the maintenance of the system, the day-to-day -day operations, the logging, the monitoring, making sure that the system is working correctly. And during the operations phase, we'll often make improvements. Now, our main goal as an auditor during the operations phase is to make sure the system is being operated correctly, that the various security functions have been turned on, that the logs are being created and that the system is being monitored to see if there are any problems with the actual operation of the system. We also as auditors during this phase are going to be concerned with change management. If there are changes to be made to the system, we want to ensure a couple of things. Number one, that that change will not bypass or in some cases diminish the security functionality of the system. But we're also going to check to make sure that if we make a change, it doesn't disable something else somewhere else in the function of the system. This is where we have to do things like regression testing, making sure that a bug or a problem that was fixed earlier doesn't get then reintroduced in a subsequent change. Make sure that a function that's working in one area doesn't get changed and affect how something else operated. So this is the traditional waterfall. As we can see, a series of sequential events that hopefully res will result in the delivery of a system that meets the user requirements, but also meets our security requirements as well. But the problem with this model is that it is so structured. If something evolves or changes partway through the model, say while we're building the system or buying the system, we find out that uh, some functional needs have changed. 
it can be very difficult for this model to be flexible, to allow us to adapt or adopt those changes. Things often have already started and they'll just continue on how they are, even if it's found out that's not going to deliver what was really needed in the end. The other thing is that this model does not encourage user involvement. In many cases, the users were involved in the early phases of requirements, and the users may have signed off on the design. But very often during the development and testing phases, we see very little user involvement. And that means that the program may start to evolve in a way that the users are not aware of and takes it away from the user's understanding. Also, the user's needs can change and those are not being communicated in a timely manner to the development team. 